Does that feel like it's getting difficult? Come set it down. Um, my initial look at you, you're probably long on your jaw. Yep. I'd say by about half inch, maybe a little longer. A couple things you can do about that. One, we're long here, right? So this is draw length, people. Right, so this is too long, you're giving up draw length just right here, and that's a silly place to give it up. You're not gaining anything by this thing being longer. Two, these are long. I mean, Crispy's a cool dude, it's real nice release, they feel really great. This nose length is so long that you're giving up draw length. Friends, Dan here with Elk Shape. I'm excited to showcase what we're gonna be doing for 2024. Joel Turner, MFJJ, and myself are going to combine all our strengths into one experience. We don't have a name for it yet, but we're gonna be doing three-day intensive camps where we teach you how to not only tune and work on your own equipment, which you will be doing hands-on reps, full day with Joel Turner in Shot IQ and Elk Calling, and of course, workout stress tests and Elk Tactics with myself. Wanted to give you guys a teaser what you can expect in 2024. Enjoy this video and you will pick up some nuggets along the way. Separation is in the preparation. Does that feel the way you normally shoot? It's like halfway between. It needs to be like that. Yeah. Okay. Your heart's gonna be bumping out of your chest. You're gonna rip the cams off your bow trying to pull the thing back. Practice under pressure and stress because that is what it's going to be. I say for a guy who's never done a backpack elk hunt, never stayed out and was tough and crushed it, put the miles in and their gear worked out and they got into elk a few times and they learned how to move throughout the country better and how to read maps and they studied elk and they saw elk and maybe they didn't ever even pull their bow back, that could be a successful year. But if you don't practice in a stressful situation or set up your release and your bow to function in a stressful situation, you're setting yourself up for a lot of failure. Shout out to Phelps. Yeah, we got Dirk's bugle too, okay? The good one. The Dirkinator. <laughs> Take a two, pass it down. Any extra trail cams, send back that way. We'll make sure everybody gets them. And then your swag bags have a cam in them. That's what it was. Okay. It was dope. So you're just shooting thumb pressure, yeah? Yeah. Suggestion, try to get your thumb all around a little bit more. And if you can actually touch at some point, it makes it harder to, to, to punch. Now, I know the position of that's probably a little hard where it is. You may have to rotate a little bit. But I, whenever I've shot a thumb, I've always touched the two and pulled with it rather than discharge on my thumb. You feel that difference? Your back movement was cleaner and your hand went back more. So you were pulling more using your thumb less. Same thing, you're, you're just kind of squeezing on the button, right? Yeah. Try to get your thumb around the button, which may require you to rotate the barrel differently. Yeah. But if you can get your thumb around it, and even as much as to touch your forefinger, as you pull, it's more of a fluid movement. It's less of an isolation of your thumb. You won't anticipate or react. There you go. Oh, See, <laughs> now, that, that's, uh, that shows you two things. One, your tension's way too light if you can't bring your thumb around the trigger. You have to be able to get your thumb on the trigger before you start to fire. If, you, if you're so light that if you breathe on that thing, it goes off, you have no preload in your thumb, you have no preload in your hand. You're not pushing and pulling, you're discharging. That's an anticipation thing. You don't want that. What's your commodities as elk hunters? There's, uh, and the other one is? Energy. Energy. So why would we burn commodities we want to sound check this, right? When's the most favorable time for an elk to answer you back? Or, or right before morning. dark or in the morning when they're moving, right? But they may ignore you, but so Dirk, take them through a bugle shed vibe. Cause I'm going to say bugle shed in my lecture tomorrow. Light triggers feel really good until you have stress. Hunting is stress. Trying to kill an animal is stress. Your heart rate goes up, your muscle tension goes up. Everything will feel firmer and harder. Your release is gonna go off quicker. Everything is gonna go off quicker if you have it light. Increase your tension so you can put some pressure against the trigger or preload before you fire. I like a ton of that. Almost all that was great other than go inside and ask one of the guys to rotate your string and turn that to where it's straight because you're looking through it like this. When you're looking through it and it's not a complete circle, you can't circle a line on there and you get a bunch of left to rights that you can't figure out because you're not exactly in the middle of the peep. Gotcha. One, one, per, one twist and the press will fix that. It'll take like two minutes, just run inside and have them do that. My best practices for solo elk hunting, I don't waste any daylight hours driving to another location. Never. I don't ever see base camp during the daylight. I don't shoot my bow and have a ham sandwich and a nap. You can do that. I'm just, again, I already said, this is just what I do. Take or leave what you like. And it's funny, the guys I know that kill up don't go back to camp and have a nap. Okay? Rub one out, whatever you do. No, don't do that. Okay? 
heightened situation, right? A yeah. little more stress. Think there might be a little more muscle tension in your hand. Don't have a light trigger. You have a light trigger, you increase muscle tension, it goes off when you don't expect it to. Plus, the way you, way you have this positioned, you couldn't get your thumb around it if you wanted to. You're really just using the tip. Uh -huh. And if you can get your thumb around it, which would require you to bring this forward more and rounded more, even to the point that you can touch here, uh -huh. right, as you, you start pulling through rather than isolating the finger movement. In the stress test, you get the Antero 2.0 from Kufaru, retail value of four or something. Great day pack. And there's cool stuff inside of it. There's $50 towards Born Primitive, workout or hunting apparel, a custom elk shape edition, buck knives. This is the Alpha Scout <coughs> Pro. So it does say elk shape on it, and your job is to get it bloody. And it's a big, it's an awesome backcountry style knife. And then a bunch of wilderness athlete supplements and some steroids. Okay? <laughs> Okay, next one, I want you to try to choke up on that release a little bit more, where the, where the, you got it in here. Try to bring your finger around it more to where your finger's not up like this, where it's actually like down. There you go. Oh, just like the meat yeah. of the thumb? Yeah, now get your finger way around the trigger, way around, where, there you go. Now, whenever you're comfortable and you feel on, start to pull back. There you go. Now, the telltale, you probably, you probably couldn't tell that was going off. Your wrist dropped as soon as you fired it. Uh, you, your hand can't react, so you didn't probably know that was going off. That looked a lot cleaner. Shoot it again. That look good. Next. Do you want me to be gentle or you want me to break you? Let's do it, dude. Only criticism I can give you is you probably knew that was going off. I like your hand position. I like your head position. You got and that tension's probably too light. Yeah. Uh, you know, you that was way too easy to get to go off. Your finger just started to get on there. There's almost no pressure in the actual thing, thumb itself. And boom, she's gone. Tension it up. Keep everything positioned where you have it though. Everything else looked really good. Okay. Just learn how to get used to some weight on that so you can apply some pressure in the shot. I'm not going to tell the story of how I learned to road bugle, but it involves a case of beer, a hunting mentor, and I was in bed. Begged the guy to... I am going to tell the story. Begged this guy who uh, helped me work on my bows. I knew Josh Jones, but I had another guy helping me too, and he was tired of hearing me suck at elk hunting. He's like, dude, I'm going to... Where are you hunting? I'll come out and help you. He shows up. I'm in bed. It's like 10 o'clock. You should be in bed. You have to get up early. He knocks on there. He's like, get your ass up. You got any beer? I was like, yeah, I got a case of beer. He's like, grab it. We drove roads all night. Did not go to bed. I got really drunk. I wasn't driving, but he was drunk. And he was driving. <laughs> <laughs> but that guy located so many damn elk. He was like, which one should we go for? And by the way, the very next morning, as in I didn't go to bed, my dad shot his first six-point bull. My dad was with us. Not too shabby. I'd, I'd almost like to see your hand rotated more at an angle. Okay. Because when you get your hand up flat like this, it's hard to get the good crux of okay. the bone structure back here. So more, so more like oh, that. more like that. Okay. Yeah. Now this next time, have some weight that you can put on that trigger so you don't just go boop when you start to lightly touch it. A lot of good. Um, where, where this is, it's going to be really hard to get around it and be pulling as opposed to isolating finger movement. Okay. And I really like to try to pull through the shot and everything that I do. Okay. So I would like to see that knob rotated forward more so you can put your thumb around it and almost touch and your like, forefinger into here. And like down some? Look, let me see it. Almost like that. So yeah, you'd probably have to rotate it forward and down a little, depending on how long your fingers are. So when you're pulling, you're pulling, and I'm not even thinking about my thumb movement at all. The pressure is what's pushing so it into it. you want to be touching these, these two. I like to touch these two on thumb buttons because it's really hard to punch a thumb button when those two are touching. So I need to offset my draw board I build. By about that much. If you're if you're smart, if you're smart, measure measure where your bolt hole is and where the center point of your grip is, and that's how much you offset it by. Right? Well, that's how you're grabbing it. Yeah. Like like the ones that pull straight, it's a half twist to a twist out of time. Every time you time it with that, because that's not how you're grabbing it. Everything going on right here is way too long, and that's probably why your peeps as low as it is. So go ahead and set the bow down. Same conversation as the other guy's string loop. See how long that is, right? And then what's the distance between your trigger and your nose? Like an inch? Yeah. All those things are going to make it really hard to get distance and range. And if you look at your sight, you got your sight down as far as it'll go, and then the adjustment in that down as far as it can go to be able to use it. That's all because of this. The higher this is, the farther you can shoot. And it's simple. It's simple numbers. Your arrow's loaded in a particular way, right? The distance your peep is above your arrow, the farther that number goes up, the farther you can shoot an arrow with a sight. Because the gap off of this in the front is directly related to this in the back. This peep's kind of low, that, that's sliding around on them, which is not good. But that being low makes this be in the bottom portion. This is where it bolts on. Look at where the scope head is, 
right? Your scope head, ideally, unless you have a really short face, which you do have a little bit of a short face, but I wouldn't say drastically, should be somewhere near that arrow if you're looking at where the, the thing actually mounts on the boat. If you're below that, something's wrong. Now, your arrow rest could be low and you could be pointed downhill, which will also make the scope head go down. But if this isn't high enough, this won't go up. And if you have like a really long release and a really long loop, the peep's gonna be lower. It's causing those problems. These things are all equal and relevant to each other. So your peep is probably a half inch to three quarters of an inch low if everything else was right. Like that loop's about an inch long, should be about a half inch long. That's a half inch of draw length. Distance on your trigger to your nose is like an inch. There's releases that are a quarter inch. I do do night hikes. I do scout out loops to hike at night to locate elk. I have this much fear of the dark, but I had 100% fear of the dark my first year elk hunting. But this thing inside of me that wants to be successful elk hunting oh, has slowly over time overridden any fear of being out there in the dark by myself. What about this? What about that? You are not going to live forever. I hate to tell you this. So if you are gonna die, I hope that I'm a grizzly bear turd. Okay, I think your peep's a little bit low. I think this could probably be one position tighter, possibly without turning your hand blue. And when you get this nice and tight, it won't do this stuff, so it's a little different every time. I'd like to see kind of make a fist, act like you're anchoring. You feel that pressure point in your knuckles on? Mm -hmm. You're not feeling that right now no. prior when you're doing that. No. That's the anchor point for your hand behind your jaw, okay. that pressure point. So this time, draw it back again, kind of make a little more of a fist, rotate your hand in about like that, and drop that knuckle in on that pressure point right there. Nice light touch. Okay, so the only thing that looked a lot better, did you feel the difference in that? I could feel the difference. Your, your peep lined up pretty good, that knuckle was good. I'd like to see you get your finger around the trigger with a little bit of pressure on it because you just started to go up to it and bam, she went off. You want to actually get around it, kind of caress it a little bit and then pull backwards as opposed to just squeezing the finger. And that might get easier if you tighten that up. Okay. I'm willing to bet if, if you can get this one tighter, it will probably feel a lot different. I try, we'll try really hard not to turn your hand blue. Okay, well, no, feel the difference how this is not moving. All right. You got one more arrow or are we out? All right, try it again when you get back. Okay. All right, but that should make a big difference. My click? Yeah. I got like a small in there that'll fit you. <laughs> do not, do not adjust it. Don't lose it. It's the only one I got. This is my release. Are you using that for tack? Yes. I'm joking, I'm joking. I'm joking. I wouldn't. You know that. Hey, grab Here you go. Get a few. Don't let him touch it. I won't. I won't. Sneaky hey, little <laughs> Whoa. See? Now, one, too loud a trigger probably, right? Because you couldn't even get in on it. And two, the way you have this positioned, like, I don't even know if I could get around here. And my hand's a bit bigger than yours, right? So if we can rotate that forward. Has anybody got an Allen wrench? Better. Try to get around that trigger a little more. Part of it's because you're not choking up on your release like at all. Like it's way out on your hand. So that ain't bad at all. You're, you're not quite touching your forefinger. And uh, as I can't. A, I know, with a smaller yeah. hand, it gets really tough to do that. Yeah. But it ain't bad. I mean, you're getting kind of the same isolation of movement. It feels like my group size, like mm -hmm. when I pun was punching it, mm -hmm. it was tighter. So is this just me? This is you not liking the fact that you don't know what's going off. Okay, so it's here. Shoot 30 to 50 arrows correctly. Okay. You'll like it. Do you guys, do you have any of these uh, ripped TKOs in stock? Uh, they should. If you run inside, they'll check inventory for you. They're there for another 45 minutes. Fraying like that's relatively normal, but this is pretty deep. Okay, so you get some good fuzz like that, and that's probably kind of dangerous. Yeah, that happens over time. So whether you, whether you shoot a lot or not, string, average string life is one to three years. Right, so if your strings are two years old, you probably ought to really strongly th be thinking about changing them. If you shoot a lot, you should probably change your strings every year. And it's not just shooting. How many days do you spend in a field? Dust, dirt, grime, water, moisture, abrasion against your clothing when you walk. This and this don't mix. Most of this fuzz is usually from brushing it up against your clothes while you're walking. Why, personally, I won't go more than a year. Well, I don't normally do this. This was Dan's idea. Okay. This was just, they're all the same distance and they're all sit at a part where I can line six people up to shoot. Yeah. Well, that's what I he wanted. 40. I think yeah. 40 would be maybe, because I've lost. Well, but you're still, it's 50 yards. You're trying to hit something that big. Let's, let's hope we can do that. So, a lot better. You're, well, you were, you were way on tip. You could easily get your finger around it more. And so try another one like that. Get around it. There you go. That's much better. Feel the difference? 
Yeah. I look a lot better. Cool. Go, go for it. Rotate your hand in a little bit next time to get that knuckle because you're kind of flat. Rotate it up just a little bit. Okay. You should cool. be good. Sweet. All Sounds right. good. Appreciate it. Right. Your wrist moves like this, right? Okay, so if you position your wrist this way while you're holding your bow, which way is the bow torque? Same direction, right? Pressure of the handle goes through here. Does your wrist move that way anymore? Oh. Kind of hard to torque your bow. You'd physically have to like rip your arm left or right to make a left or right movement. If you stay like this, you're making left or right movements every time you shoot it. Muscle tension is not duplicatable, it's impossible. Every time you do one task, you lose a percentage of your muscle strength and it goes into something lower. So if you're using muscles to try to hold your bow straight, it's going to do this every time you shoot. But yeah, I like 400 to 450 grain setups. I like three blade broadheads. I like steel broadheads or titanium broadheads, but it's gotta be freaking sharp. If you would push your finger down on the tip of your arrow and not be worried about it, you're shooting a shitty broadhead.